Welcome. I'm going to show you how to use the Bible.org app. You can look over my shoulder and see how to use the different features to read and study the scriptures. I'm going to first set up my versions. So, to do that, to change or add or take away versions, first tap the settings button to change the settings. So we have the top right there, tap your settings button. We're going to change versions. All right, so these here are the uh, default versions. I can change a version set there, see at the bottom tab, or choose a version set. I can completely change, for example, to a Roman Catholic version set or other different specific types of version sets, like a Protestant version set with Hebrew and Greek. That's what that might look like there. Or I could uh, switch it back to a different version set here. So I'm going to go back to change versions, and I can change that to the default version set. But let's say I want to <clears throat> take a specific, I'm going to tap the notes button there accidentally. Let's say if I want to change one specific version. Let's say I want to change the King James Version to the NRSV. I tap that tab, I choose the new one, and when I hit save, it's going to change the, my right column to the NRSV. There we go. If I want to switch one version from the left column, let's say, to the right column, I simply do that by thinking that there from the top to the bottom are the columns from the left to the right. So let's say I want in this column, and then in this column, there we go. So there's my versions. I've set them up. We're ready to go. Now I'm ready to go to a verse. So, you see there on the top toolbar, it says go to or search for. This toolbar can do both. It can both go to a verse and it can search for words or phrases. So right now I'm going to show you how it can go to a verse. So, let's tap on the top toolbar and I'm going to type in EPH, which is Ephesians. And I want to go to Ephesians chapter 4. And there we go. So, one of the great features about the Bible.org is that it gives you multiple versions side by side. So, for example, if I'm reading in the ESV, I can read here like in verse 2. With all humility and gentleness and patience, bearing with one another in love. Now, if I'd like some expanded understanding, I can simply look to the right or to the left. Verse uh, 2 in the NASB, <clears throat> with all humility and gentleness, with patience, showing tolerance for one another in love. Or in the King James, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. So by simply moving from the right and to the left, I can gain understanding based on how the different translators have translated those verses. So that's one way to go to a, a verse. Um, I, chapped in, I typed in four, that's going to take me to the book, and if I want to, I can simply add a space and add the verse number, or I could put in a colon and the verse number. Either way is going to take me to that verse, and I can scroll up and scroll down. If you scroll all the way down to the bottom of the chapter, you have the option to tap that next chapter button, or it tells you there. If you swipe left, from the right to the left, it'll automatically take you to the next chapter. And it, the opposite is also true. Swipe right, and it'll take you back to the previous chapter. So that's a little bit about navigating through the chapters and verses and how to go to a verse by typing into the top toolbar. You can also go to a chapter and a verse in a book by tapping the book button there at the top. You see where it says Ephesians 4? It has an arrow beside it because that tells you that can be tapped. So I'm going to tap 
Ephesians 4 there. And now we have our verse selection menu. I can change my book. And these are in biblical order, canonical order it's also called. But if, uh, let's say I'm new to the scriptures and don't know exactly where 1 John or 2 John is in relationship to the verses or to books around it, then what we can also do is tap alphabetical order. Right now, I have all the New Testament books in alphabetical order. So both there's John, then right after it's 3 John, 1 John. And if I want to get all the books of the Bible in alphabetical order, not just separated by Old Testament and New Testament, I now have Ephesians, right after Ephesians comes Esther. <laughs> so that's an option to help you find books in the Bible. So then you'll simply tap your chapter, you'll tap your verse, and you'll go. Tap save. And it takes you right to it. So you have two ways to go to a verse. So we've looked at how to find your versions, get your versions set up like you'd like to read them. Um, one benefit of having side-by-side -side versions here, <clears throat> and then also how to go, the ways to go to different places in your parallel Bible. Let's look now at the feature of the verse menu. All right, so we're here in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. You can do a lot in your parallel Bible here with the Bible.org by tapping the verse itself. So I just tapped verse 1. And what it shows me here are all the different options in the verse menu. So this is a menu that was populated, popped up by tapping the verse. So it can go away by tapping any space outside the box. Tap again. There we have that verse menu. So the first thing it has listed here that I can do in the verse menu is a word study. Now here is the King James Version of this verse. I could do a Greek word study on any of these verses by simply tapping the English word of that verse. For example, beseech, as it's translated in the King James. That's a word translated urge there in the ESV or implore in the NASB. Parakaleo. We have right here a word study of the Greek word, because we're in the New Testament, the Greek word that corresponds or goes along with that English word, beseech. They translated parakaleo, beseech. Or in the other versions, they translated parakaleo, the Greek word, urge or implore or urge in the NIV. So what a word study is here that we have access to is a study, a list of all the places that Greek word is used in the New Testament. So as you see there in Ephesians 6, 22, that same word was translated, he might com comfort, <clears throat> he might comfort, or beseech, or beseech, he might be comforted. This is how it's translated. So this helps me not just by searching beseech, but actually by doing a word study of the Greek word. Also on the left I have um, a definition by Bollinger and I have a definition by Thayer on the right side. But the, one of the, mo the most powerful resource that, that this offers here is the in that word study, let me get back to it there, is this middle part, the verse list. Letting the verses themselves explain how the word is used in the scriptures. And that's your first go-to option. So all these places the word is used. And as you see here, I'm viewing the whole verse, the complete verse of this word study here. Well, let's say I uh, it's kind of a lot and I really only need to see a little part of the verse. Well, I'm going to go to the settings button not on the top right, <clears throat> that's settings for the whole app. But I'm going to go to the settings button of the word study window. So we have our window here where we're having our word study. <clears throat> I'm going to tap that settings button 
of the word study window. Now it gives me options. When I go into portrait mode, uh, do I want to see the Bollinger or the Thayer? Because it's too, too narrow to see both. Do I want to see, <clears throat> when I see the verse list, do I want to see the King James part of the verse where the word is used? Do I want to see the Greek or do I want to see both? I'll show you what both looks like here in a minute. And then when I do have the verse listed, do I want to have the full verse like I have now or par partial verse? So I made some changes here to the word study settings. I'm going to save that. And now you see I have a partial verse and I've added the Greek beside it. If that's a little too much for you, you can just simply keep it on only the English language translation. So I desired, good comfort, beseech, comfort, beseech, beseech. So these are all different ways that this same word has been translated. And you can easily scroll through them and even tap on them. Tap on the actual reference. See how I did there? Ephesians 6.22. And that will take me to that place in the scriptures. And it keeps my word study open so I can easily tap through and read the context of all these different ways and places in which this word is used to gain greater understanding of the words in the scriptures. Let's say, however, if I want to search an actual English word, <clears throat> just how often a word is used, for example, or a phrase. Let's, let's search the phrase love of God. I typed it into my search box and I'm going to press my go arrow and it pops up the results for me. Scroll down a little bit and there are my results. Well, in the ESV, King James, NASB, NIV, whatever versions I have open, I can search that word that I've searched or phrase. So at the top, I'll have the exact phrases that have been have uh, come up in the New Testament that I'm searching here because that's what's selected right now. If I wanted to search Old Testament, I could tap Old Testament or Apocrypha or Psalms and Beyond or Acts and Beyond. These are all different places where I could search this phrase, love of God. So here are the first verse that's used, love of God, is Luke 11, 42. And that's what uh, the context here that's been, I've been sent to Luke. And I can inside the search results box here, I can scroll up and say, oh, in John 5, 42, it's also used. But I know that you do not have the love of God within you. Romans 8, 39 in the ESV is the next place it's been translated. Nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And these are all the usages of that exact phrase, love of God. Now here, <clears throat> there are 31 uses of the words love of God, not the exact phrase. So here, like in John 8, 42, it's been broken up. But it still has those two key words, and even all three words, God, love, and then of. So that is um, another result for you. But then, then the final result will be just some of the words and not all of the words. So after all 30 of those, you know, here there are 86 results of the words love of. There are 62 results of love God, and there are 787 results for of God taking out the word love. So that's a detailed re um, results list there for each version you have open to really enable you to search in a lot of, uh, with a lot of different parameters or bounds to help you get to the scriptures what you're looking for, to help you get into the scriptures. So we've looked at the settings button on the top right, how to change versions. We've looked at the verse menu, tapping a verse, you get a verse menu. And then we talked about searching. We'll talk about one more thing here on the verse menu. Well, a couple things. On the verse menu, the next part down there is the verse study. Now, that's going to give you a detailed Greek study, and I'll share a little bit about that in our next video. You can also add a note, which I'll share a little bit about that also in our next video, part two, maybe. But you can also share a verse as an image. So what the app can do for you is turn the verse itself into a picture. So you can make it into a square picture that you might use in Instagram.
or a regular sized image that you could use in Facebook or you could use in Twitter or other social media outlets. So it's producing for me the picture. I tapped save as an image. And there I have my verse as an image that I can share in any way I'd like. I can share it with any of these options. A lot of sharing capabilities. So that wraps up part one of using the Bible.org. When I work with you next time, we're going to look at sharing through Facebook. We're going to look at using the verse study and then also the notes feature. I hope you enjoy using the Bible.org Parallel Bible to enjoy the scriptures.